Manchester United's game against Liverpool showed just how much every single player at Manchester United is willing to give everything for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer because making three first half substitutions due to injury against your bitter rivals when they're chasing the title and you're chasing fourth, it should kill your momentum in the game. But Scott McTominay, Andreas Pereira, every player that came in there stepped up massively and United benefited because of it. That being said, United are now in the middle of an injury crisis with so many players out injured. But how is Solskjaer going to navigate this period? We've got Crystal Palace coming up, we've got Southampton, then PSG and Arsenal before Wolves. How will Solskjaer maintain this unbeaten run that he's started in the Premier League? From 10 games, he's got 26 out of 30 points. The best ever start by any Premier League manager ever. And now it faces a massive test with so many injuries. What I'm going to do in this video is run through the starting 11 that I think we should see against Crystal Palace, the player switches that I would bring in for those that are injured, and of course, I want to hear from you in the comments below as always. If you are new, make sure you go down there, hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell. If you're a regular, drop a like on the video, but let's get straight into it. First things first, we need to take a look at the players that are currently injured. Now, we've got Jesse Lingard came on for the injured Juan Mata, only to get injured against Liverpool himself. He's unknown as to when he's going to be out, but because he was rushed back, I think, for this game, a mistake from Solskjaer as far as I'm concerned, I can't see him playing in the next couple of weeks. And Juan Mata as well, he went off with a hamstring injury. So did Ander Herrera, he went off with a hamstring injury. Matic is currently sidelined with a muscular injury. Rashford, he played the full 90 minutes against Liverpool, but he was injured from the first minute or so when Jordan Henderson went in hard on his ankle. Looked like that could be a bad impact injury, but I'll be surprised if Rashford was risked for Crystal Palace and probably Southampton as well. And Anthony Martial, he's currently missing with a groin injury and no one's really sure when he's going to be back. But given that Lingard was rushed back and he suffered another injury, I'd be surprised if Solskjaer rushed Martial back. So looking at that, that's five out of the 11, as far as I'm concerned, that Solskjaer would be starting. It's the equivalent of Liverpool missing Salah, Mane, Firmino, Kaita, Wijnaldum. It's a fucking lot of big injuries to cope with at once. And we've got PSG coming up, we've got a turnover, a 2-0 deficit, and Pop is suspended for that game. I don't know how Solskjaer is going to cope with this and keep this run going, but if he is going to do it, these are the changes that I would expect to see. Now, the first change, I think we're going to see a lot more of Scott McTominay in for Nemanja Matic in the next couple of weeks. Scott McTominay's performance against Liverpool was arguably a sort of coming-of-age performance for him. Under extreme pressure, even before the kickoff, so many people writing off McTominay and expecting him to play abysmally. But against Liverpool, he was mature, he was controlled, and he played very, very well up in a very high-pressure situation for McTominay. Now, Solskjaer said it after the game that he can be the Darren Fletcher of the squad type player. That's something that I think we've all pretty much said since day one. He's always looked like that sort of non-glamorous central midfielder who's not going to do anything really special, but he's just as part of, a, part of a cog. He's an excellent player to have. And I think he can do well. I, I think it's quite, for me in the squad, he's the most like-for-like -like replacement for Matic. So I think it's pretty much a cert that he's going to come in and start against Crystal Palace in Southampton. And if he can play like he did against Liverpool in those games, maybe he will become a more regular player in this squad. But it's certainly a huge opportunity for Scott. Another midfield change that Solskjaer has to contend with is Ander Herrera, who went off with a hamstring injury against Liverpool. And I'd be very surprised if it wasn't Andreas Pereira who came in to start against Crystal Palace. Pereira was on the bench against Liverpool and so was Fred, a 50 plus million signing that we only signed in the summer. And Solskjaer chose to play Pereira. Now, if that doesn't give you the biggest indictment of where Fred is in the pecking order at United, nothing will. For me, it's almost uh, Fred's closer to the end of his United career than he is to the start of it. That was an opportunity there for Solskjaer to bring him in. But he preferred to trust Pereira, the player who he started against Burnley and who played, let's be honest, abysmally against Burnley, gave away that first goal and just had an overall poor game before he was taken off. But Solskjaer decided to put confidence back in Pereira, even by giving him the opportunity to come off the bench against Liverpool. And in those circumstances, I think the pressure was higher on Pereira than it was for McTominay because of how Pereira played early this season when given the chance against Burnley. But like McTominay, Pereira performed. Neither of them played incredibly well. 
man of the match winning performances. But in a makeshift midfield, they didn't get dominated by Liverpool in any way, shape or form. Liverpool had a lot of possession and we sat deep, but they were good in that deep and disciplined formation. Certainly we'll get the most out of Scott McTominay. But Pereira, we need to see him express himself a little bit more against Crystal Palace if he does start. But from what we saw against Liverpool, both of those together with Paul Pogba in front of them, maybe that can be a midfield that can work for United in the next couple of weeks. But as changed as our midfield is going to be with Pereira maybe and Matomane coming in, our attack's going to be even more changed because Marcus Rashford, Anthony Martial and Jesse Lingard are all likely to be missing against Crystal Palace. Certainly Lingard and certainly Rashford. Maybe Martial will come back. As I said, I don't think the Solskjaer will rush him back. Does that mean that Solskjaer will change to the 4-1-2-1-2 formation that he's used against Spurs and Chelsea? Maybe play with two up top? If not, and he keeps this same formation, these are the changes that I think we'll see from Solskjaer in attack. And the first one for me absolutely should be Alexis Sanchez coming in up front as the striker for Marcus Rashford. As far as I'm concerned, it's really, really important that Sanchez plays up front and not out on the left. Personally, I've always felt that this was Sanchez's best position in the squad, but this year, certainly, he was never getting in ahead of Rashford and Lukaku was preferred as a second choice. But I think Lukaku works better in a different position, which I'll get to next, and Sanchez works better as a central striker. Now, Sanchez, so many United fans have wiped their hands of Sanchez, get him out of the door in the summer, don't want to see him play for United anymore. But Sanchez still is a top draw player. And if anything, this is the opportunity for you, Sanchez, to show that you really genuinely want it. Because I feel now it's not down to fitness, it's not down to confidence, it's not down to anything apart from what you want to do. If he wants to really work for it and show that he, he still is hungry to play football, like he said in the pre-match interview with Ander Herrera, I think, before the Chelsea game, fucking go and do it. Go and show it. Because for me, it seems to be a mental issue with you, Sanchez, rather than anything else. But playing up front here, I think we can get the most out of Sanchez there. And that is why I would like to see him deputise for Rashford rather than Lukaku, who I would rather see start out on the right wing when Lingard is out. Now, he may have spent the majority of his United career playing as a striker, but I feel under Solskjaer's system, we're getting more out of Lukaku when he's playing as a wide man. Because Lukaku, with his back to goal, as a target man, I don't think it gets the most out of him and I don't really think it gets the most out of the players around him. Playing out on the right-hand side like he did against Arsenal, he can still use that pace in behind when that space is there and Pogba's trying to look for the balls. He's got the strength to out-muscle a defender when running for the ball as well. And if you do want to use him as a target man, you still can, but he's out on the left wing instead of up front. I feel that would get more out of Sanchez in this formation and I think it would get more out of Romelu Lukaku as well. So for me, they are the two main changes I would do up front if we're going to be without Rashford and Lingard for a couple of weeks. Yes, it's not as good. Yes, it won't have as much movement in it, but it should. Sanchez is fit enough and more than, more than capable sorry, of doing what Rashford can do up front, making himself a nuisance, permanently moving, making it impossible for defenders to defend against him. And Lukaku, he won't be able to do what Lingard does, but he can offer other things as well. And we need someone like Ashley Young, Diogo Delot, whoever plays down the right-hand side, to use and build a partnership with Lukaku because he'll be able to get them into the game more. But for me, Lukaku, I would rather see him play out on the right and I would rather see Sanchez play up front if we're going to be without Rashford and Lingard. One injury I'm not too sure about is Anthony Martial in terms of who replaces him in the squad. I think it's the hardest to make a straight swap with. Solskjaer rushed Lingard back and he suffered an injury against Liverpool. I don't think that Solskjaer will take the same risk with Anthony Martial. But if Martial's not going to play, where do United turn to? It could have been Juan Mata, but he went off injured against Liverpool as well. Could it be Andreas Pereira maybe further up the pitch with Fred coming into central midfield? Could it be Ashley Young playing as left wing or right wing? I don't know. Diogo Delot can maybe come in at right back. Or will Solskjaer turn to the academy graduates and give an opportunity to somebody that is what I would like to see. And for me, out of the options there, Tahith Chong is the clear candidate. You've got Angel Gomez. I think he'll come into the squad in the next couple of games. I don't think he'll start. But I think Chong is a more natural fit to that winger position than Angel Gomez. James Garner is a central midfielder. He'll come in and deputise because we don't, we're without Matic, we're without Herrera. We need central midfield options. 
But in terms of the attacking position there on the left, I'd like to see Chong. Because again, something that I think we've seen without Lingard and without Rashford, certainly against PSG, is if you play the wrong players in the wrong, right players, sorry, in the wrong positions, it doesn't suit this Solskjaer style of play. Sanchez was poor against PSG. I think United need to try and get more out of them and playing Chong, like he did against Reading, he's that sort of player, similar type of player to Martial in that he's confident running with the ball at his feet at pace. And we need to, we can't lose that pace. The pace is the reason why this attack has worked so well under Solskjaer and that is why I would like to see Chong start there against Crystal Palace on Wednesday night. So with all the injuries that Solskjaer has to deal with, so many changes that are going to happen, what can we expect to see against Crystal Palace on Wednesday night? As I said, if you stick to the 4-2-3-1, I would use this formation here against Crystal Palace. But if you go with a 4-1-2-1-2 with more of a diamond shape, maybe I would play two up front with Sanchez and Lukaku. But I think Solskjaer is going to stick to the system that's worked for him in the majority of the games. And that's that 4-2-3-1. I think you're going to see McTominay and Pereira in midfield with Pogba just in front of him. He's going to have to lead that midfield with those two youngsters behind him. And then I would go up front of a Chong, Sanchez and Lukaku with the back five unchanged. It's a lot of changes that we're going to have to deal with. And it's a real test. You know, we've had so many tests under Solskjaer and he's passed every single one so far. This is another major one with so many key players out injured. Will Solskjaer be able to motivate and maintain this unbeaten run that he has got going in the Premier League? I think with that team, he can. But Crystal Palace just beat Leicester 4-1, I think it was, at the weekend. And then we've got Southampton coming up next before PSG and Arsenal. I mean, the challenges just keep coming, but Solskjaer just keeps knocking them down. And I hope he can do it with this. This is arguably the biggest. Simply because of you can't lose five players from your starting eleven and expect there not to be a negative impact on the football that you play. But it'll be down to Solskjaer's management and his man management to see how he can get enough out of these players that United don't lose their momentum entirely. But I want to know from you in the comments, what do you think Solskjaer should be doing with these changes? Who should come in? Who shouldn't come in? What position should they play in? And how confident are you that Manchester United can maintain this unbeaten run in the Premier League with all these injuries? Let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, if you are new to the channel and you're still here, well done and subscribe down there. But until next time, take it easy.